This much delayed speed paint is a time lapse I made in Procreate of a depth dragon. I did it as a Christmas present. It's also called a cave, underdark, or shadow dragon. They are one of the lost races or creatures of Alpha Earth from my main stories, The Chronicles of Alasa, which have many iterations that have been mentioned in previous videos of mine. When the magic returns after the curse blocking the magic on our world is broken, some people can awaken and become one of the lost races. One of the rare possibilities of a lost race is one of the dragons. This kind of dragon prefers to live in the dark and is actually weakened by too much bright light or radiant energy, particularly sunlight and ultraviolet radiation. They live primarily in caves and underground. If they venture above, it's usually only when it's nighttime. They have large pointed ears that are mobile and can fold back along their body, as well as spines along their back that can fold back if they're tunneling. The horns are flattened on top and hard like a diamond and almost never can break. The wings are wide and short and fold up well along the sides and along the back. The tail is very mobile and has a hard venomous stinger on the tip. Resistant to all poisons, they are utterly immune to necrotic or shadow damage. They are weak to radiant, also called light damage and they breathe a breath weapon of necrotic shadows in a cone. They have very few children throughout their life, and unless killed, they'll continue to grow in size and power until they reach their 10,000 year in age. Then they will age rapidly, and often they will seek out a death spot because they can sense their death coming. They also have bioluminescent chromatophores in their skin, which means they can make glowing patterns appear on their skin. Their scales themselves are actually thick and translucent, with darker appearing skin underneath. The main color of their body tends to be black, dark gray, deep browns, darkest red, or darkest purple. They have serpent-like tongues and often use them to help them scent. They have incredible senses altogether, including a sort of tremor sense through their scales, as well as can see in absolute blackness. They also have absolutely fantastic hearing. Within 60 feet of them, nothing can hide from them. They can even sense the vibrations on the ground or in the air, and it's considered a complete blind sense. So this dragon here is not a particular individual from a story, but just an example of the species. And the genders are similar. Now the other thing that needs to be remembered is that because everyone was human until the curse broke, all these dragons are able to turn back into their human form before they awoke as a dragon and are able to disguise themselves as humans. But they are affected by factors of their dragon form. For example, they're much more powerful and basically harder to kill even in their apparent human form, but they're affected by things that the dragon form would be weak to. So anyone who awakens as a depth dragon will actually be weak in sunlight and would vastly prefer to only be out at night. So sometimes they would present similarly to someone who woke up as a vampire lord because of these reasons. Not really liking being in the sun and having a desire to be out only at night. Many of them would also choose to live their lives different ways, like by going off and living in caves, or by choosing to live more like a human, but function uh, at night instead of during the day. When I painted this in Procreate, I used a separate layer to do the sketch, which I then cleaned up on the same layer. Another option I often do, and that you can do for that, is to use a different layer on top of the rough sketch to do good lines. But what I did is actually erase sections and correct them. So I have one layer that's lines. Underneath that, I did the main color base, and I had a layer also on top of that. Now, I was able to use the alpha lock function in Procreate so that I could draw only on areas I'd already drawn to get shading and details in the color flats, as well as to get colors on top of the line art. As I did a top layer on top of everything else, I could brighten up things and add details on top of everything, and then switch between the layers to get different functions and features put in. I also did a layer underneath which was on multiply to do a shadow, and behind everything is the layer that the caves painted on. Before I did the final version that I saved on printed, I actually stretched out that shadow underneath to make sure that it looks stretched out. Now here you see the version of the dragon with the bioluminescence, the chromatophores added in. I ended up having to make the dragon more visible again so I could see what I was doing better, but at the very end you'll see me dim it down so that all you can see is the glowing markings instead of everything else. So it's just uh, interesting. And I decided to put false eyes on the ears so that the dragon would be even more scary and confusing in the dark. Not that a depth dragon isn't pretty much the most dangerous thing you could encounter in these caves anyway, because honestly, it pretty much is. And here's the final look at the bioluminescence. 
Now this part here is a study of Josh Ramsey, the lead singer of Mariana's Trench, which is a Canadian band. It's taken from a screenshot of the new video, I Knew You When, and it's a study based on that. Now, I was trying to do it in my style, so the eyes are a bit bigger than a normal human would have their eyes, because I just love big eyes always. But I wanted to draw a picture of someone with their mouth open singing, because I don't often draw or paint that. I usually just draw people smiling. So I wanted to do something different. And I was also trying to get all the colors correct and in the correct lighting, although I did cheat a little bit and make a color palette kind of stolen from the screenshot before I did this painting here. Um, I'm not completely happy with this because I don't think it quite looks like him. I know it's supposed to be him, but I think it's like a little bit off. It's still a good painting of someone who looks similar to him. Now here I turned off the sketch layer so you can only see where I have the final painting layer, but I have a separate layer that's the sketch layer, and that layer is actually on top of this layer here. And to adjust some of the lighting, I actually did a separate layer on top just for the yellowish, so I could adjust things well. I was looking at the sketch layer still while I started to get this jacket put in, and I'm actually extremely happy with how the jacket turned out, the overall lighting, the colors and composition, um, and the roughness of the background and how I simplified it from the more detailed screenshot. But I'm, I'm not completely happy with the likeness. I'm happy with the painting overall, but I'm not completely happy with the likeness, if that makes any sense to anyone. So sometimes I succeed at doing a painting that looks like a human and looks good, but doesn't look quite like that person. And when I'm trying to make it look like that person, that can be a bit of an issue. I wish I could play the actual song with this that the uh, screen grabs from, but you know, copyright and such. So instead I had to just put a royalty free music here that I thought felt somewhat similar to the song, even if it's not really even that close. So he recently changed his hair back to being black with a blue streak in it. And the only reason it doesn't quite look black with a blue streak here is because the yellow lighting is so bright, it actually alters the colors of everything towards the yellow shades. So this is quite a bit accurate to the screenshot, but in some of the other scenes in the video, it's more clearly blue and black than this recommend you check out Mariana's Trench in their new video I Knew You When and I might paint another screenshot from the same video where his hair looks more clearly the way it is now and try to make it look more like him. I also have a werefox version of him and a human wizard version for my main Chronicles of Velasa stories which is why it sort of thematically fits with this video. For certain celebrities and real people I have a version I used in most of my stories about what happens to them after the awakening. Some are still muggles, but many I actually give magical powers to. So look forward to the next video. Sorry it's so late. Bye!